The integrated flux nebula was not exactly discovered. Rather, its existence was very slowly recognized. And I guess in that sense, the integrated flux nebula was discovered in the same way that it is resolved photographically, a little at a time. In the mid-20th century, extragalactic dust was observed by the Palomar Observatory, though it was very dim and its significance wasn't fully understood. Now the integrated flux nebula, or IFN, reflects a lot of near-infrared light. And in 1984, the IRAS or IRIS infrared satellite observed more of it, giving the story of the integrated flux nebula a bit of structure. And somewhere between late 2004 and early 2005, Steve Mandel confirmed it to be a large dust complex and began to catalog of the objects. The IFN is composed of dust particles of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and some other elements. And, as a rule, no star formation is going on in it. The dust clouds that comprise the IFN orbits above or below the plane of the galaxy. And in that sense, they move around the galaxy something like globular clusters. Though I have not read it, I would imagine that's why we don't see star formation in the IFN. Nebulous dust clouds tend to collapse into stars when something creates some form of shockwave within them. So if they're orbiting in the relatively peaceful calm of the empty regions above and below our galaxy, they're not going to run into any objects such as exploding stars that could create the shockwaves that would induce star formation. Among astrophotographers, the integrated flux nebula is often seen as one of the most challenging things to shoot because it's incredibly dim. But when an astrophotography friend told me that it would take several hours to even catch a hint of the IFN, and you really need a fast telescope to do it, I said, with modern technology? Hold my beer. He said, well, look it up. It's right there on Wikipedia. So I did. And yep, there it is, right there on Wikipedia. So I apologized for not being aware of that article and said, please also hold my other beer. Now the IFN is indeed very dim. It has no stars nearby, but rather is lit by the combined light, or flux, of the billions of stars of the Milky Way galaxy, which also contributes to its by and large colorless appearance. The visible light of all the combined frequencies makes white light. But the idea that the IFN is so dim that it cannot be seen without hours of exposure is one of those numerous myths that float around the astrophotography community. And in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to disprove it. So, here's a screen capture of my telescope being operated through NINA. Just a Celestron 203mm Schmidt Cassegrain. That's the telescope more commonly known as the Celestron C8. Not the Edge model, just the regular C8. And a Player One Ares M monochrome camera. And presently, I'm in the final moments of shooting a 60 second exposure through the luminance filter. Give it a moment. There it is. It's dim, but the IFN is clearly visible from the upper right, passing right through the galaxy at the center, and progressing down toward the lower left of the image. I'll trace it out here. And if you look carefully, you can see the hints of haze elsewhere throughout the image, especially toward the center, just to the upper left and lower right of the galaxy. This image is riddled with integrated flux nebula and it makes its presence known with just a 60 second exposure. Now, I should add a couple qualifiers here. This was a black night, no moon at all. And the Sky Story Observatory is in a dark sky region where the skies are somewhere between Bortle 1 and Bortle 2. I don't have a lot of altitude. I'm only about somewhere between two or 300 meters up. It's a little altitude, but not enough to make a huge difference. The biggest thing though, is the lack of light pollution. The integrated flux nebula reflects full range of light and it's very dim, and that means it can easily be lost in light pollution. I'm also using a monochrome camera shooting through a luminance filter, which gathers light 300% more efficiently than shooting through an OSC, or one-shot color camera, as well as 300% more efficiently than using discrete red, green, and blue filters only. And it's vastly more effective at collecting photons than shooting through narrowband because narrowband is only allowing photons from narrow slivers of the visible spectrum through. Nonetheless, with the right technique, you can begin to perceive the integrated flux nebula with as little as a 60 second exposure. And if I so chose, I could push the developing here as hard as possible. I could create a bandy, hyper contrasty image that would reveal the IFN even better. Let's just do that. 
I've opened Pixel Insights in the background and I'll open the frames from the subframe selector and select one of the 60 second exposures from last night. This one will do fine. We have the date information on this frame. It was shot on September 25th, 2025, just a couple weeks ago. And this frame was captured at 0341 minutes and 16 seconds. At my latitude at this time of the year, that's still a couple hours before the end of astronomical dark. So I've dragged that frame onto Pixin's site and I'm going to expand it so that we can see it a little better. And now I'll hit Control A to apply the screen transfer function. Once again, you can see the Galaxy NGC 7497 at the center and the IFN from the upper right to the lower left, passing right through the Galaxy is especially pronounced in the lower left. I'm going to take a few steps to bring up that IFN even further. First of all, I'm going to sharpen the image. I will begin with the Blur Exterminator, first running it in the correct mode to correct any aberrations that may be in the stars, and then sharpening the entire image. When that's done, I'll drag the image to the upper left, and then open the Histogram tool, and I'm going to create a very steep, contrasty histogram within the image. This will introduce some artifacts like banding, but it's also going to bring out the IFN even further. Finally, with the stretch done, I'll run the noise exterminator. This will clean up the image and help the detail that's now been brought out within the image to show up better. Pushing the histogram extra hard like this, making it extra steep, brightens all the information, including the dimmest detail within the image, but goes a lot further in revealing the presence of the IFN, both to the right and the left of the galaxy at center. It also reveals more of the trace detail down near lower center and toward the upper left of the image. So let no one ever tell you that it takes hours to reveal the IFN. It takes 60 seconds with the right equipment in the right circumstances. And the right equipment isn't special, super expensive equipment. It's just a decent telescope with a decent aperture and a camera that's good at capturing light. The most effective telescopes are going to be wide aperture telescopes, which are usually going to be reflectors, which have the advantage of also being very affordable wide aperture telescopes and a monochrome camera because they have the advantage of being able to capture all the available lights in the visible spectrum through a luminance filter. Oh, and regarding telescopes, don't get caught up in thinking that you need a fast telescope. Remember, I'm using a schmidt Cassegrain telescope. That telescope has a native focal ratio of f10, and with the Celestron reducer presently on the image train, its focal ratio is 6.3, making it not an extremely slow telescope, but far from what one would call these days a fast telescope. So, how much of the IFN would I capture were I to film all night gathering a total of six hours of LRGB information. I gather only 25% RGB, so that's 4.5 hours on luminance and 1.5 hours in RGB. In this short amount of time, we can capture this much of the integrated flux nebula. And if we keep on adding integration, that's more and more 60 second subs, we will resolve more and more of the detail and structure within the IFN. The preceding two nights were fairly cloudy, so between them I was only able to gather another six hours of integration, bringing the total integration up to 12 hours and resulting in this image. And it was the same over the next two nights after that. Both nights were partly cloudy and between the two of them, I was only able to gather about another six hours of total integration, bringing the total integration of this image up to just over 18 hours. As you can see, every time we add more integration, we add more information to the image, revealing more of the detail and structure within the integrated flux nebula in this region of the sky. And if I were to expose longer, even more detail would be brought out. But that's pretty much a given. If you do astrophotography, you know the longer you expose, the more detail you get. But the simple fact is, you can begin to capture the integrated flux nebula in as little as 60 seconds of exposure. The resulting image may be noisy, it may lack detail, but there is definitely integrated flux nebula showing up with just 60 seconds of exposure. I hope you had fun with this and can get out there and shoot some of the integrated flux nebula yourself. And if anyone tries to discourage you by telling you, hey, it's way too dim, it's going to take forever, just let them know that, nope, with the right camera, telescope, and good dark skies, 60 seconds. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this just for fun video as much as I enjoyed making it. Now get out there and shoot that amazing sky.